supposed to be a high performance here. No, we don't need it. All right. Praise the Lord. <coughs> well, um, you know, I think we've heard the message tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and go on home right now. <laughs> I, just, uh, I am not going to preach the message I believe the Lord had uh, stirred my heart to preach all the way over here. And that's happened to me more than 500, I think it's 73 times. But I do think some thoughts on prayer would be appropriate. Yeah. Amen. And so we'll do that tonight and uh, we'll see if the Lord uh, wants me to preach that message tonight. I plan to preach tonight tomorrow. We'll see. It's all in his hands. Amen. 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 Thank you, preacher. Amen. That was awesome. That's good. Amen. Help Amen. Me. Bless me. Strengthen me. Good. All right, I want you to open your Bible to Matthew chapter 18 and find verse 19. Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 19. Now let's stand for the reading of God's Word. I this gets you started there. We'll let you sit down and we'll look at a couple of other verses before we go on into some thoughts on prayer. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 19. The Bible says in Matthew 18 and verse 19, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. I can imagine all that's been going on since, uh, well, since uh, 2020, now 2021. I don't know if 2021's trying to be bad, it's just bad. <laughs> you know, it's just a mess. And I'm sure you have been praying and praying and praying about all these things. Alright? And uh, you might be wondering what's going on with those prayers. You might be wondering, why isn't God doing something about this stuff. You know, when is God going to like, you know, show up and do something about this stuff? And uh, it can really be a load to carry. And your faith, if it's weak, can begin to falter. So uh, I believe the Lord would have me give you some thoughts on prayer that will hopefully help you see through all this and understand how prayer is real. Amen. Even when God says, well, he answers differently than you expect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, help me to preach now, at least to hear what you have for us tonight as we think about the paradox of prayer. I'm asking you for that help, Lord, to be a help. In Jesus' name, I'm asking you for it. Thank you, baby. Seated. Let's look at another place. John chapter 15. The Gospel of John chapter 15. And we could look at that. If I were going to choose text for these plots I'm going to share, I would have to go and find every place in the Bible where God made a promise to answer our prayer. <laughs> we won't be able to do that tonight. But, uh, <laughs> but let me give you just a flavor of the kind of thing I'm talking about. John 15 and verse number 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. I've kind of just hung my salvation on a verse that says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Amen. shall be saved, yes, Amen. among some others. So uh, this verse says something, and um, I'm guessing that many of you have wondered sometimes what happened because you took a verse like this one and you went into your prayer closet and you prayed in faith believing, mm -hmm. and it just didn't turn out the way you expected. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. And now verse number 16, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your uh, fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Whatsoever, that's pretty broad. Yes, sir. I imagine if you're a good Baptist, every time you've prayed, you've ended within Jesus' name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've right. done what it says you're supposed to do, but you haven't got what you asked for many times. In fact, I dare say, some of you would, perhaps if we got real honest, would say you've pretty much given up on prayer. Uh -oh. Mm -hmm. If we got real honest about it. Yep. You pray because it's one of the things you have to check off to be a Christian and all that, and to do your duty, whatever. 
but uh, you, you probably, many of you, uh, perhaps have stopped believing in prayer a long time ago. Mm -hmm. wow. Just gave up on it. <clears throat> and that's really sad. Yeah. Because he really wants to answer your prayers. Yes, he does. Yeah. You look through the scripture on God's promises to answer prayer, and they're like, come on, yeah. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's the impression you would get if you're paying attention to these verses. It's like, please, come on, come on, ask whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever you ask, yeah. I'm ready. Right. Yeah. But about four or five unanswered prayers in a row pretty well kills that. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And pretty soon your prayers just become routine. There are three occasions in which God does not answer prayer. There's case one, case two, and case three. Case one and two you're very familiar with. Mm -hmm. Doesn't answer prayer when you don't ask. Yeah. Yeah. James chapter four. You have not because you ask not. Yes. Let me expand on that particular case just a bit. When you have asked in unbelief, you haven't asked. That's good. That's true. Well, that's good. And that's true. So a lot of our prayers fall under case one. Because we didn't really, not really, we didn't really expect him to do anything. Uh -oh. Now, I've tried to establish a rule in my life. I'll pass it on to you. You might want to pick it up. I decided some years ago I'm never going to ask for God, ask God to do something I don't really expect him to do. Wow. Huh. Hmm. Wow. He decided not to do it. It's just, it's insulting to him. Hmm. Sounds good. Hmm. Right? Think yeah. about it. It's insulting. It's good. That's right. We're sitting there praying, praying, asking for this, money, and God's looking at our heart and says, "You don't expect me to do that. You don't have any faith. You don't believe I'm going to answer your prayer." Hmm. Hmm. And that's that's going to negate the promise. Hmm. Yeah. Right? That's, that's going to cancel it because He said, "If you." Uh, you have not because you ask not, and you haven't really asked if you don't ask in faith. Then you say, ask believing. Yeah. If yes. you ask believing. Mm -hmm. Case number two is you ask and have not because you ask amiss. Mm -hmm. That you may consume it upon your own lusts. Yeah. Now, I've been a Christian for some time now, as you probably. <laughs> and I've prayed a lot. A lot. Do a whole lot of praying. And uh, so I I know whereof I speak. I know how easy it is when you ask for something in faith believing it doesn't happen just to dismiss it. Oh well. I must have asked him this. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> now, about this time, if I was preaching tonight, <laughs> I'd probably just jump all over that <laughs> and say something like this. <laughs> <laughs> if you really believe that the prayer you just asked for wasn't answered because you asked the miss, then fix the amiss! Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's good. It's good. We'll just pass off unanswered prayer with, oh well. Oh yeah. Well, I guess good. I asked a miss. Wait a minute. You asked a miss? Wow. Yeah. Whoa. What lust are you feeding? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. It's what good. lust of the flesh are you trying to feed? That's true. Are you trying to get God to feed it? Uh -oh. We can go there for a while. Yeah. All right. So don't just dismiss unanswered prayer like that. Mm, that's good. If somebody says, well, it must be because there's some sin in my life. Well, they'll just jump all over that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amen. You shouldn't sleep till you figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes, yeah. yeah. sir. It's good. Yeah, we just take unanswered prayer so cavalierly. Wow. 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 Yeah. But unanswered prayer is like a big deal. It's huge. You add up all the times that God said, you ask, I answer. You ask, I answer. You ask, over and over and over and over and over and over. And so we ask, He doesn't answer, and we go, oh well. 
Right. Excuse me? Yeah. Me. God didn't keep his word? Oh. And that's like okay with you? Mm. <laughs> of course it isn't, but you see what yeah. I'm getting at. Yes, right. sir. Right. right. Yeah. This is not okay. Yeah, that's good. Another promise I made to God some years ago is I'll never ask for something. First one. But I don't really expect you to answer. And the second thing is if you don't answer, I won't stop until I figure out why. That's good. Uh -huh. Huh, that's good. I will not just walk away from an unanswered prayer. Mm. Ever. I'll go back to it over and over until I figure out why you said no. Not because I'm like challenging him. I don't want to, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because I know if it is one of those ask a miss things, I got something to miss in here. Right. Mm. Yeah. I better get it straightened out. Yeah. Yes. So often we dismiss unanswered prayer on the idea that, oh, well, I guess I'm just not good enough. Mm. I'm not a really holy, holy guy. I'm just not righteous enough. God answers prayers to those really righteous guys. Like that piano player over there or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> this preacher over here or that preacher back there. You've got, you got them super dupers. Yeah. God answers the prayers of super dupers. When you hear people giving testimony to answer prayer, you go, wow, there's a super duper. Mm, that's true. Well, I, I wish I was, you know, a person that could pray and get my prayers answered like that. Or you might even question, I wonder why my prayers aren't answered like his are answered. That's interesting. I don't have those kinds of stories. I guess some Christians just have mm. these stories, and I guess I'm just left out. I'm the kid that's... Over there watching everybody else enjoy God. Hmm. I'm, I'm the guy over here watching everybody else experience these amazing things. Must be nice. Right. How shameful that we're okay with that. Yeah. How sad that we just sort of settle for that. Wow. Yeah. It's horrible that any Christian would just go ahead and relax and. Hmm and accept as part of their Christian life the reality for them that God really doesn't answer my prayers. Wow. And so then you learn how to pray real generalized prayers. No. Mm -hmm. You really can't get specific about anything because that, that doesn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. So it becomes very vague and general in our prayer life. Right. All these things are symptoms of somebody who hasn't understood, I've come to understand case three. It's sad how many times Christians actually become practical atheists. Yes. Uh, because uh, of an unanswered prayer or a prayer life that's unfaithful. Right. They become practical atheists. Now by a practical atheist, I mean that they live their life Serving God, doing the things they're supposed to do as a Christian, and, and, and they're, they're attached to people in the church, so of course they've got relationships there, and they keep coming, and they keep going through the motions and singing the songs and doing all the things that, that you do as a Christian, but down in their heart, they don't really believe God. There is anything about them, and they even entertain in a secret way a doubt that he's even real. Wow. Is God real? Mm. One Christian had this problem told me, I just when I pray, I just throw it up and see what sticks. Wow. How sad. Yeah. We ought to have a relationship with God that's vibrant and real. Amen. I mean that, well, that, I don't know a better way to put it out there other than that nothing wakes you closer to God than answered prayer. Mm. There's nothing like it to encourage your faith, to embolden you. There's nothing like that. You ought to have a fresh testimony of an answered prayer that happened maybe yesterday. Wow, help us. Yeah. You ought to have a testimony of answered prayer. Just It's so great. It's a normal thing in your life. The norm should be you pray and He does. Wow. Amen. That should be the norm. 
If you read the Scripture, right. that's the expectation of Jesus. He didn't put a bunch of fine print behind each of these promises. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on for each other. He just throws it out there just as if he's actually intending to answer your prayer. Mm, right. So there's got to be something wrong when he doesn't. <clears throat> and you're going to just assume it's you. Well, I read a verse that says if we confess our sins, yep. he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm. So if I've confessed my sins, then that's not the problem. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I guess I didn't confess them enough. Well, then get to enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's well, good. I guess I haven't yes, confessed them sincerely. Well, get to sincerely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Never accept unanswered prayer. That's good. <laughs> Good. But let's look at case three. Case one and two are pretty straightforward. Case three, a little more complicated. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to cheat you out of anything. But let me just use two simple illustrations that illustrate case three. Case three involves some pretty heady stuff. The, the, the things God can't do, you touched on a little bit, Richard. God can't lie. God can't deny himself. There are some things you can ask God for that simply get negated right out the door. Right, right out the gate. Right. To be facetious, to make the point. Um, if you sincerely, with all faith, you couldn't do this, even if you tried hard to be sincere about something so stupid. <laughs> but if you sincerely prayed, oh God, make a rock you can't pick up. <laughs> Your request negates the promise. Right. That's correct. Because you've asked God to do something that is not consistent with who He is. Right. He can't lie, and so on. Yeah. So the point I'm making right now is I like deep that we didn't bring our snorkel. I mean, we didn't bring our scuba gear, so we're not going to go there. But I just want you to know that there's some really interesting stuff that you can explore on that. But let me give you two simple illustrations of the third case. The third situation or circumstance in which God says no. We have two examples. One of them, I think I'll start with the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. Huh. Yes. Yeah. Jesus asked the Father for something that the Father would not do. Mm, true. Jesus said, remove this cup from me. That's what he asked. Yeah. Now, what we like to do is fix that by saying, yeah, but afterwards he said, not my will, but thine be done. He yeah, to that word. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I have another, I'm going to have another going to get you thing here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you said, not my will, but thine be done? Mm. Can't help us. Uh, well. Come on. Every Christian who is one has the spirit in them that says, I have a father. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. I guarantee you there's not a Christian that's been a believer for more than mm, two or three days <laughs> <laughs> who hasn't had it in them to say, I want your will. Right. <clears throat> not my will, thine be done. So now we fixed it, right? Doesn't matter if you don't have an answer for it, because you already said not my will, not my will, but thine be done. So it, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You can't throw away the fact that Jesus asked the Father for something that the Father didn't do. That's true. That's true. Why didn't the Father do it? But what's going on here? Jesus Christ knew it's what the Father wanted him to do. That's, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 He said more than one time, the whole point, folks, is for me to drink this cup. Right. That's right. It's yeah. like, yeah. that's yeah. why I'm here. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Earlier, he even said as much. That's true. I have a cup to drink. Can you drink it too? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Now he's in the garden, and all hell has been cut loose on him. Yes, sure. And he says this, 
Father, he even, you know what he even, he even pulled a Bible verse on his father. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done that? Yeah. He pulled a Bible verse. He said, thou canst do anything. You catch that? Yeah. Jesus said, thou canst do anything. You can do anything. Remove this cup. He even used the Bible verse on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and the father said no. Right. The father yeah. said no. We're not going to do that. And he didn't say these words, but I'm just, in order to, to move the message forward toward the point I'm trying to make here, I'm going to add, we have, we have something we're doing here, son. There's a plan in play here. Yeah. I have preordained this plan as That's the way true. to save mankind. That's We're right. not going to change the plan. Yeah, it's good. But I believe he did say this. I'll tell you what I will do. I can't remove that cup from you. You've got to hold that cup for eternity. Yeah. The only way to get that cup out of your hand is to drink it. But son, I'll tell you what I'll do. You call on me, I'll send more than 12 legions. Yes. We'll pull the plug on this thing. We'll pull the plug on it. But you'll be holding that cup for the rest of your training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. But we'll pull the plug on it. Yeah. You did. And if Jesus had not said, not my will, but thine be done, not only would all of us be in hell, that's true. I want you to think about something. Yeah. Abraham would be in hell. Yeah, that's oh, true. Right. Absolutely. David would be in hell. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just lost it. That's true. Yeah. All of those souls that were that were waiting for the time of resurrection would have all been let go, and all mankind would have gone to hell right. and finding the lake of fire. Right. right. Oh, you imagine what was. Hanging in the balances in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. When Jesus said, I'll drink it. Yeah. 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 Glory. Amen. Case three. Wow. You don't know. You've got your you got yourself squared away. You're praying in faith, believing, and you're, you're not living in, in active sin. Your sins are confessed, and you're trying to walk holy before God, and you're trying to perfect holiness and the fear of God, cleansing yourself of filthiness and of uh, the flesh and spirit and you're and you're and you're doing what you can and you've taken hold of first John 1 7 8 9 you've confessed your sins you've been serious about it and yet you're you're praying about so you could be in a case where you know what God's gonna say no because we got a plan here so mm. and you've got to go through this you've got to go through this thing the only way uh, the only way out of the situation that you're under right now that you're praying for me to deliver you from, the only way out of it is drink the cup. Mm. Yeah. You're going to have to drink it. You're going to have to move through it. Now, I don't think any of us here have the uh, status of Jesus Christ. Right? No, sir. So I don't think the Lord is going to drop everybody into hell on our account. No. Right. It is big. Jerry to do it instead of you. <laughs> That's the cook over there. Okay, we got Jerry's all over the place around here. Amen. Right? <laughs> but you, you get that point? That case three illustration? Does that make sense to you? Yes. You can. It can be a situation where you're going through something and you don't want to go through it anymore. You're done with it. But there's a plan. There's something we're trying to do with this. This is something we're trying to work. There is something important that's getting done through this, and I need you to drink that cup. Yeah. It can be like that. You can have case three. Here's another example of case three, and we'll be done tonight. The Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Paul asked three times to have the thorn removed. Yeah, we got right. And all three times, the Father said what? No. He, he ultimately says, my grace is sufficient. That's right. But he says to him, no, we're not going to move the thorn. That's correct. 
Paul was convinced that thorn was interfering with his ministry. I'm convinced of that because I just don't believe the Apostle Paul was trying, was asking for this uh, as an occasion to serve the flesh in any way. That's true. I don't think Paul was in that case. I don't think he was a case too. No. I think Paul perceived this thorn in his flesh was interfering with his ministry. Yeah. Because he was all about getting it done. That's right. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> So it's not a case two. I think it's a case three. Uh, In fact, we're told it is. Yeah, okay. We are told it is. That's right. And in this case, God reveals it to Paul. And Paul understood, the reason I have this thorn in my flesh is mm -hmm. so that others would not magnify me more than they should. That's right. People. It wasn't to keep him humble about himself. He's the guy that said, I count all things but dumb. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. The problem was other people around him wow. sure. tend to worship would exalt him, him above Amen. what was appropriate. That's right. Amen. And isn't this beautiful? Amen. That's right. Paul said, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Amen. Amen. Isn't that great? That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm good with that. Amen. We can, I'll embrace this thing you put in my life. If it advances the kingdom, that's right. If it furthers the cause, right. mm -hmm. if it fits your plan for my life and the work you want to do in my life, I don't think you should just flippantly say, "Case three. No, no, gotta get past one and two first. That's right. You better you better check on one and two <laughs> very very thoroughly Amen. before you just pass it off of that one. That's case good. That would be disingenuous, it would be inappropriate, and who knows what you'll miss. It's true. In your growth with God, if you just take case three as the explaining explanation every time you don't get a prayer answer. Right. But it could be case three. Right. And when it is, you need to embrace it. Amen. Paul needed to embrace the idea that he was going to live the rest of his life ouching with that thorn rest of his life. Kind of like old Jacob limping on that thigh the rest of his life. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Jesus Christ, of course, it's beautiful in, his, in, in, in that story from our Lord. Now, on that third instance when he finally resolved, there's a very interesting development on all that. First it's remove this cup and then it's, you know, you could do anything, remove this cup, and then it's like, um, if it be possible, <laughs> You see, it's a very interesting development there. That is true. And finally, he just says, and he says it again, if, it, if, if, if there's no other way but this way, mm -hmm. thy will be done. And then the angel came and attended to him, and the Bible it, it indicates he got up with perfect composure yeah. and mm -hmm. peace, mm -hmm. and he was all comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Amen. he's our model and our example. Yeah. And you know what? You know when you know you've come through case a case three situation mm -hmm. and you've uh, and you've yielded is when you have composure Amen. and peace, peace. and the love and the joy and the peace and the long suffering and the gentleness and the goodness and the Amen. faith and the meekness that is the fruit Amen. of the spirit begin to prevail in your manner and in your attitude and in your spirit and in your heart and when you're in that place you can know okay we've embraced the case three let's go. Amen. Right. Right. Good. But as long as you're still going, I don't like this. Uh -oh. I want that thorn gone. Mm. Please take this cup. Mm. They quite kept there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's good. You're not there until that grace that's sufficient is truly <laughs> embraced by you as sufficient. Amen. Yeah. It's true. When you know it is. Yeah. But when you accept it as it is. I hope this will help you in your prayer life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hope yeah. you'll uh, never, ever, ever take unanswered prayer in an, any kind of a cavalier attitude. Don't, don't ever do that. I, I would encourage you to promise God as I have. It's been a blessing to me. And it's helped me grow so much. Oh, mercy. I would... I would say that this little truth that I share with you has probably had more to do with my spiritual growth I've been able to enjoy over the last 30 years as any other single thing that God has done in my heart and my life. Help me understand 
the importance of a prayer life. Not just living with, I, I do my prayers, but a real prayer life. Imagine having a relationship with your wife where the only time you talk is for a few minutes in the morning just to get it out of the way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how long that marriage is going to last, but I don't think it's going to last very long. Right. You've got to be able to develop real communion with one another. Yeah. Right? That's just right. in a marriage. Amen. Yeah. Or with your children or whatever. Your friendships even. If many of you handled your friendships the way you handle your relationship with God, you wouldn't have any. That's right. So take your prayer life seriously. Don't ever let a prayer go unanswered if you don't chase that thing down. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Amen? Church? Friends? Preacher? Amen. 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 Have a time again of invitation. We'll do a little bit of talking here, but you can ignore me if you'd like to spend some time in prayer.